Welcome back. Myself, Nasim Khayyum, Assistant Professor, Department of Engineering Sciences at AISSMS Institute of Information Technology. So in the previous sessions, we were discussing about the homogeneity concept, where we have come across this working fluid, thermodynamic systems, and we have discussed also closed and open and isolated systems also. So now, we will discuss about the thermodynamic property and state. So if we understand this one, then it is very easy to move forward. So basically, a, thermo, a measurable characteristics of a system which desirable, which describe or identify the system. Example, mass, volume, pressure, surface area, density, velocity, entropy and enthalpy are called as the properties. So thermodynamic property can be defined as intensive property. There are basically two major classifications, intensive property and extensive property. These are the two. This basically categorized based on the dependent and independent of the mass. So if the property is depend, independent of the mass, then it can be regarded as the intensive property. If the property, if the thermodynamic property is dependent on the mass, then we can say that it has an extensive property. Example of in intensive property is such as pressure and temperature. We see that pressure and temperature both are independent of mass. That's why we can call it as intensive property. Whereas extensive property is nothing but uh, mass volume and energy. These are dependent entirely purely on the mass. That's why these three are categorized into, uh, are categorized or called as the examples for the extensive property. And uh, we need to define state. What is state here? Actually, uh, when the condition of the system is completely described by the values of the properties, then the condition is said to be state of that system. So moving forward, so thermodynamic process. So basically what is thermodynamic process? So when the system changes from one equilibrium state to other state, then the change of state is called process. You can see here from this graph, we can easily understand when a, when a system changes from one state to the other then we can call it as a process. The series of state through which a system flows during a process is called the path. You can see here how beautiful it is. So when a system changes from one state to other state, it can be regarded as a process. So, and again, when a system flows during a process, which is nothing but a path to understand, right? So when a system changes from state one to state two, it is nothing but a process. When a process is followed a system flow, which is nothing but a path of that process. And again, types of processes. This, this, this is also very important. We need to understand about this one. So basically there are isothermal, isobaric, and isochoric processes. And uh, when coming to uh, a process during which temperature is constant, it is termed as a isothermal process. It is iso means same, and thermal means, you know, heat or temperature. So same temperature is we having, then it can be regarded as a isothermal. So here we come to isobaric process. Iso means same, and baric means, bar means pressure unit of pressure is bar. So if we have same pressure across the process, then we can be named it as an isobaric process. And uh, we can, can come to isochoric process. Same, choric means volume, a process during which the specific volume remains constant. If the specific volume of that particular system remains constant, then it can be regarded as an isochoric processes. And again, Cycle. So these are the you know uh, 
basic uh, this is uh, you know you see this is the ts plot temperature versus entropy you can see temperature is constant so this is isothermal and when coming to pressure versus pv plot you can see this is one to two process is nothing but constant pressure and again this is constant volume so vertical line across along the v so cycle the process during which the initial and the final states are identical is nothing but a r is termed as a cycle so basically we need to know we need to know about this term particularly in thermodynamics what is thermal equilibrium or equilibrium any two bodies are said to have equality of temperature when there is no change in any observable property when it brought into thermal communication then the equality of that temperature is also termed as thermal equilibrium so after this we need to discuss we will discuss about the as i told there are basically four laws in thermodynamics which are the pillars for the thermodynamics zeroth law first law second law and third law that we will discuss in our next sessions thank you